Saddle up and prepare for a unique ride as we take you down the Horse Heritage Project Trail. Our first stop will be to take a look at how this project began and at the work of the Borderless Arts Tennessee participants. This will lead us to our second stop, which is the rich and fertile fields of Sumner County, Tennessee, where Horse Heritage is. We will then race across the plains to the Borough of Land Management in Reno, Nevada to learn about the 50th anniversary of the Wild Horse and Burrow Act. Finally, we will jump across an ocean to end up in Cape Town, South Africa to hear about the Tom Rowe Haven Horse Program. Before we begin, there are some thanks that are due. Hats off to the lead artists for this project that include Dee Kimball, Amy Beth Rice, and Betty Turney Turner. Special thanks to those who have helped this project along the way to include Diane Black, Sue Burgess, Daisy Casey with First Horizon Bank, and Mimi Art Farm. We salute those who provided funding to make this project happen, which includes an ABC grant from the Tennessee Arts Commission and Mark and Nikki Antonini. Music for this project was written through a Borderless Arts Tennessee School Residency Program with Laura Roche's class at Station Camp Middle School under the artistic direction of Les Kerr and Tammy Weiss. The school residency programs are supported by funding from a contract from the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts, International Paper, and Public Consulting Group. Your trail guides include four MTSU students, Luann Braunwalder, Dallas Sprigman, Caitlin Manny, and myself, Cat Paul. Before we head down the trail, I will share with you a poem that lead artist Dee Kimbrough wrote. She said that this program really moved her as her research for this program made her more aware of the multitude of ways that the lives of horses and people have intertwined throughout the ages. Here's her poem entitled, Horses Throughout History. Pounding hooves have carried mankind throughout the ages. Words struggle to capture their constant support and example. Warrior, forging bravely into dangerous places. Farmer, breaking hard ground to bring food to empty tables. Athlete and entertainer, racing, jumping, prancing, reminding us of the beauty of strength. Enforcer of the law, an eager second fiddle to their master's will. Therapist, reformer of the heart, and reflecting emotions that might heal a wounded soul. Freedom personified, perhaps the most precious gift offered is a glimpse into these wild, bold, untamed, and yet yielding hearts, so we might remember and protect our own. It's time now to head on out to the trail. We hope you enjoy the ride. Each year, Borderless Arts Tennessee looks for special projects so that its Teapot Diplomat Visual Arts program can learn new art techniques while engaging in the community. Borderless Arts Tennessee is a statewide nonprofit, but it is located in Sumner County, Tennessee. Therefore, it looked to its own backyard to find what makes the Sumner County community unique. In that research, what reared its head was the horse. The Borderless Arts participant began their research by visiting the Lead Me On horse farm. It is here that they learn how to groom, care for, and train a horse. The participants also spent time at the farm taking pictures of the horses. Next, the group visited what is known as the trifecta of horse plantations, Fairview, Foxland, and Kennesaw. On these visits, the group learned the history of the people and the horses that made these plantations part of the rich horse heritage, not only of Sumner County, but of the United States and beyond. It is during this visit that the group made horse marionettes. After experiencing much of the horse heritage, the participants were provided with horse booklets, with activities and a quiz to test their knowledge of what they were learning. Those who completed the booklets were provided with horse measuring tape prizes. Jennifer Scalorn won a beautiful horse book for winning the honor of most creative and complete booklet. In order to understand some of the horse anatomy, the group worked with Amy Beth Rice on horse sketches. All of this ultimately led to the two big horse projects. The first project was a collage created under the artistic direction of Dee Kimbrell. The collage consists of images of horses in a variety of settings, such as those found in prehistoric rock carvings, working on the farm, racing, and more. 
Horsehair from horses from the Lead Me On farm, as well as horseshoes, were incorporated into this piece. The piece will be presented to the Sumner County Commissioners in January 2022, and then reside at the historic Cromer Barn, which is currently being remodeled. The second piece of art is a horse mural made of glass under the artistic direction of Betty Turney Turner. This piece will be photographed and become part of an international art exchange with the Tom Bro Haven Horse Program in Cape Town, South Africa. The finished piece will be gifted to the Borough of Land Management in Reno, Nevada, in celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Wild Horse and Borough Acts. Sumner County, Tennessee. When I say Sumner County, Tennessee, you don't automatically think of horse racing. And when I say horse racing, you don't automatically think of Sumner County. However, in the late 1800s and early 1900s, horse racing was actually one of the most popular things in Sumner County, and it played a giant role in the heritage and the history of that county. At the time, they mainly raced steeplechase, and then, of course, they did fox hunting as well. However, later on, flat racing became a big deal, which is the type of horse racing we see today. There were three plantations that played a huge role in helping to create the racing scene by owning the tracks, producing the horses, and everything along those lines. This was the Foxland Hall Plantation, the Kennesaw Plantation, and the Fairview Plantation. One of the horses that was owned by the Fairview Plantation was actually named St. Blaze. He produced some of the best horses at the time. And even now you can see lineage from horses that are running on tracks like the Saratoga Racetrack in New York or Churchill Downs trace back to St. Blaze. He even has a road named after him in Gallatin, Tennessee, which I think is pretty cool. While the plantations may have been built almost an entire century ago, you can actually still visit all of them today. The Borderless Arts Program did this in July of 2021 for a horse heritage project that they were working on. They got to tour the plantations, they got to see stables that were built back then, and they learned a lot of history involving the plantations. I encourage everyone to, if they have the chance, to go out and talk to the people on these plantations and learn the history of them. And I definitely encourage you to learn a little bit more about Sumner County. Hello, my name is Luann Brownholder, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about the Bureau of Land Management. The Bureau of Land Management was established in 1946, and their mission was to sustain the health and diversity and productivity of public lands for use and enjoyment of present and future generations. They manage land from California to Virginia, and they work with tribal nations to protect sacred Native American lands. They also protect the wild horses and burros on America's lands. Wild horses were defined as unbranded, unclaimed, free-roaming horses or burros found on public land. Velma B. Johnson, also known as Wild Horse Annie, helped raise awareness for wild horses. In 1959, the Wild Horse Annie Act was passed and it established to reduce the use of vehicles in hunting wild horses and burrows. But it was not enough to protect them from the hunters. By the start of 1971, the number of wild horses and burrows was significantly decreased due to hunters. The Wild Horse Act was established in December of 1971 to protect the wild horses and burrows from being hunted. To this day, the wild horses and burrows run wild and free on the range. The Bureau of Land Management helps reduce the number of wild horses by rounding them up and allowing people to adopt them. This helps maintain a sustainable number of wild horses on the range and gives others a better life. Tom Rowe Haven is a nonprofit organization founded in 2012 by Gilly McCulloch and is located in Cape Town, South Africa. Tom Rowe Haven works to rescue horses who have been abandoned or hurt. They also work with local children and adults by allowing them to interact with the rescued horses through equine assisted therapy. These people may be affected by substance abuse, human trafficking, or mental health issues. Their mission is to give both people and horses the help that they might need. They offer many different programs at Tom R. Haven, including a dance fitness class and a kids program that teaches how to care and work with horses. 
They also have fundraising dinners that allow them to raise the money needed to continue this program. Gillian founded Tom Rowe Haven as a tribute to her mom and dad, who loved helping animals. There are currently 18 horses living at Tom Rowe Haven, including Flash, Dreamer, and Georgie Girl. These horses allow people to create connections that might not be possible through other forms of therapy. Tom Rowe Haven's mission is to create a place of healing for the people and horses around them. And they are constantly looking for new ways to expand and extend more help including buying land for more horses or buying a bus to transport visitors and supplies. There are many different ways that you can help Tom or Haven, including making a donation. You can even pick to make a specific donation for different projects, including healing sessions or overall running costs. In conclusion, Tom or Haven is an amazing organization that offers help and a safe space for the people and horses in need around them. Thank you.